Most people see the park by driving across one of the most scenic stretches of pavement in North America. It's called the Going to the Sun Road. We begin our 52-mile journey on the east side, near St. Mary's. The east side is much drier than the west, and there are fewer trees to block the glacial carved scenery. These shots were taken shortly after sunrise. As we head west, the road is sandwiched between two dog flats on our right and St. Mary's Lake on the left. A sign at one of the many turnouts points to a very unique mountain. Water from this small minor peak flows to three different oceans, the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Arctic. The power of ice is plain to see above Two Dog Flats. Millions of years ago, this area was a shallow sea and sediment collected over eons. More recently, several large glaciers have come and gone. The last one receded more than 12,000 years ago, and when it did, it revealed millions of years of Earth's history. This relatively flat section is excellent wildlife habitat. Shortly after sunrise, herds of elk come down the mountain and towards the lake. Bears and other predators also tend to drink at the lake in the morning. Never approach a bear, and don't get out of your car. It's much safer to see them through the window. Stop at one of the many turnouts and take a look around. A short trail from the Sun Point parking lot leads to St. Mary's Lake. This sign warns that mountain lions have been in the area recently, so you need to be alert. This is the view of the lake, again, just after sunrise. Look carefully and you might just spot one of the smaller mammals in the park, like this alpine squirrel. A few miles down the road is one of the most photographed locations in Glacier National Park. It's the Wild Goose Island viewpoint. This spot should be visited often. The view changes throughout the day. In the morning, it's dramatic. It's serene in the afternoon. And in the evening, it's spiritual. Just past Wild Goose Island, the road begins to climb, providing an excellent view of St. Mary's Lake. A few miles later is Sunrift Gorge. This stream is just off the road. If you're ready for a little exercise, get out and take the trailhead to Bering, St. Mary's, or Virginia Falls. The road cuts through a variety of colorful geology. In places, it's a more typical dull gray or pale yellow. But then a few miles away, it's bright green. And after that, a deep red. Near the pass, it cuts through the black band. The reason for the diversity is fascinating and explained well in roadside geology books available in the gift shop. As the road climbs, the forest gets thicker. The alpine portion of the road begins at the Jackson Glacier Overlook. This is the largest glacier in the park, but this one, like all others in the park, is predicted to disappear in the next decade or two. The higher up you go, the more twisty the road becomes. At Lunch Creek, when the weather is nice, there's another great photo op. As the road gets higher, the views become more spectacular. It's very hard to capture the true majesty of the scenery. It's one of those places you really have to see in person to fully appreciate. There are tunnels on either side of Logan Pass. This is the East Tunnel. It's just below the pass. During certain times of day, cyclists are allowed to share the road. There are a surprising number of riders who complete the route. And it's even more amazing because from west to east, there is more than 3,000 feet of elevation change. Logan Pass is the highest part of the road. The visitor center is a very popular spot, and it's a good idea to get here early because the parking lot is often full by noon. 
You can also get here by Red Bus, as several tours stop here. The visitor center houses several exhibits, a small gift shop, and a comfort station. Hiker shuttles stop here to both pick up and drop off those interested in hiking one of the many trails in the area. Just behind the visitor center, the three-mile round-trip Hidden Lake Trail is one of the most popular. Here grizzlies and other wildlife are often seen. In fact, it's not uncommon for the trail to be closed because of too much grizzly activity. On this day, there were only goats. This is Hidden Lake. The symbol of the park is bighorn sheep. They can often be seen in or near the parking lot. The weather changes quickly up here. It can be warm and pleasant in the valley, while it's cold and raining or even sleeting or snowing at the pass. Clouds rush in from the west and are pushed upwards by the mountains. Cold precipitation is often the result. Meanwhile, east of the divide, only a few clouds spill over the ridge. Most just evaporate in the drier air of the east. Just west of the pass, the road begins to descend as it crosses a fall. Near the fall, a short iron walkway provides access to an overlook. This view shows the Highline Trail, just above the Sun Road. The road is carved into the garden wall. The descent is narrow, a bit twisty, and seemingly always under construction. But there are plenty of pullouts where you can stop and take in the magnificent views. Just west of the pass is Bird Woman Falls. It's one of the highest falls in the park. At 460 feet, it's still dwarfed by the mountains. Heaven's Peak is one of the better known mountains along the Sun Road. Construction delays present an opportunity to spend a little time looking at it. Stop in the large parking area called The Loop. In 2003, much of this area burned in a forest fire that closed the park for much of the summer. Fire is an important part of a healthy forest life cycle. Without them, there would be little new growth. This 2010 video shows how the forest is recovering. The West Tunnel is just below The Loop. A window in the tunnel provides a striking view of Heaven's Peak. Avalanches are common as temperatures rise in the spring. Here, the power of an avalanche is clear to see. Each spring, several avalanches occur along the length of the road. Cleaning them up is one reason why the road doesn't open until mid to late June. The road eventually levels out and follows the contour of McDonald Creek. Soon, you'll see another large parking area. It's for the Trail of the Cedars. It's one of the most popular places in the park. Here, a boarded 0.7 mile wheelchair accessible trail winds its way through an old growth cedar forest. At the far end, you'll hear the sound of falling water. It's Avalanche Creek, where it narrows into a small but beautiful gorge. It's hard to believe that an area so lush like this temperate rainforest, is less than 40 miles away from the dry grasslands of Two Dog Flats. The road continues west along McDonald Creek. Several parking areas provide access to McDonald Creek. This is one of the creek's many cascades. It was shot in the fall when the water was low. In the spring, it's a raging torrent. The creek empties into Lake McDonald, this lake is the largest in the park. It's about 10 miles long. Lake McDonald Lodge is on its southeastern shore. The 2003 fire burned much of the forest on the far side of the lake. By the time you've reached the western end of Lake McDonald, you've been exploring the Sun Road for about two and a half hours. So if it's time for a break and maybe a snack, stop in the town of Apgar. Here there is lodging, shops, and a nice diner. The going to the Sun Road ends a few miles later, at West Glacier. Since 1932, the 52-mile going to the Sun Road has allowed visitors to see the prairie as it meets the mountains. It's allowed them to see spectacular glacier-carved valleys, as well as the largest glacier in the park. 
At the top, you cross one of the most scenic passes in North America and see animals that live there. On the west side, you witness the rebirth of a forest. And you've walked through an old growth cedar forest. The going to the sun road is one reason the park is called the crown of the continent. Here's a postscript. The sun road is constantly being maintained. When workers are on duty, there can be delays of about 30 minutes on each side of the pass. The park website provides good road status information, but there is no internet access in the park, and there's poor cell phone coverage. Ask a ranger at the park entrance for the latest construction news.